One of Allah's names is Al-Ahad, and Al-Ahad is one of the most important names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's, it differentiates Islamic theology from other types of theologies or types of metaphysics that are out there, right? So if you go into the history of philosophy and the history of metaphysics and the history of theology, there's a few like very, very central questions, but one of the main central questions that confounded a lot of people are how can like one entity that's perfect, such as a creator God, how could it have activities or do actions or have qualities that are limited in time and space, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks or he, yeah, he creates, he makes something or he, you know, anything else that he does that would occur within time and space. For some people, this is a big problem because they said, well, you know, God himself is beyond time and space. So how could then he do something that's limited to time and space? That's the, the general, in layman's terms, kind of source of the issue. And so people throughout time, they constructed all these convoluted philosophies and ways to reconcile or solve this problem. A lot of those ways that they tried to reconcile it, you know, for example, they, they ended up having a tremendous influence, especially on Christianity. If you look at the whole doctrine of Trinity, it's extremely influenced by Neoplatonism and this particular brand of Greek philosophy, all of it based on the assumption that these two things can't go together, right? That if you're going to have a perfect creator God, it also can't go together with accidents, with things that are done in time and space, things that are limited. But Allah is Al-Ahad. He is the one singular, which means that all of his characteristics and all of what makes Allah, Allah, his actions, they are all within that one entity. They're not spread out. This is one of, if we're going to go to a typology of sort of theological malpractice, this is something that people did. They said, okay, they have this one God and he creates and he destroys and he forgives and he punishes. Well, how could all of that be within one? Let's separate them into four gods. Now we have creator God, destroyer God, forgiver God, or merciful God, loving God, and then punishing God, right? This is a human tendency and the devil's right there to try to suggest these sorts of things to people to make it seem like a good idea. Al-Ahad, Allah's name Al-Ahad reminds us, no, it's all within the same entity. It's all the same God. Just because Allah has all these different attributes and all these different characteristics and all these different activities doesn't mean that it's, we need different entities in order to explain that. It's all the power and the might and the characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.